Good evening. This is the second part of the 12 signs of Jacob and the 12 sons of Zodiac. And my reasoning is to further illustrate the real meaning of those 12 sons in the scriptures, in the esoteric level of biblical knowledge. Religion deals with doctrine and its belief system. The knowledge of the Son of God uh, towards the unity, or the knowledge of the Son of God towards uh, the unity of uh, Christ deals with the knowledge of human and divine nature. So we're moving towards this knowledgeable entrance into uh, the esoteric Bible, uh, the, the book that black folks have and don't have at the same time. If truth has a foundation, then it doesn't change. Not only does it not change, but it changes the one who applies it to him or herself. That's the nature of truth. Blavatsky is a credit with having stated there is no religion higher than truth, which is quite accurate. In terms of identifying the differentiations of truth, in terms of different religions and different scriptures, if that truth raises, changes, transforms your consciousness, then it's valid truth. If it does not do that, then it's information. And, and of course, there's nothing wrong with information, but the, the, the clarity of spiritual pursuit is to find truth and to be impacted by that truth. So that brings us to this level of Moorish science. And before I, I do this, I want to uh, re-insigniate this. this. This has become my most recent revelation. You, you, you both have seen that on the Koran Circle 7. And what I did not cognize until recently, that that's in the Bible. You know? And uh, it's, it's universally s s uh, uh, significant, first to those that believe in the, the pamphlet, the Koran Circle 7, and to anyone in search of universal truth, because this is universal. It, it deals with nature in its numerical value as well as in its geometrical value. In uh, Proverbs chapter 9, verse 1, is what you want to record and when you get home to your holy book, the Holy Writ, as it's called in science. You can check this out. Wisdom has built her house. She hath hewn out her seven pillars. She has killed her beasts. She has mingled her wine. She hath also furnished her table. Now, here's the con this is the concept here of table. This is the concept of her beast. The beast this particular uh, proverb is referring to is the beast in the sky in terms of the 12 zodiacal outlines of the 12 constellations. The word zodiac in the Greco-Latin language means circle of animals. In uh, the Hebrew, the word zoar means both beast and zodiac. You see? So th the concept of circle is written, not drawn, but it's still symbological representation. The seven pillars are the seven cosmic laws of the universe. That's why the Kibalian is such a significant piece of literature. 
as well as at this particular juncture of astrology, the count was seven planets for our solar system. Uh, it, it's still true because the sun and the moon are not planets, they're luminaries. Uh, the, the, virtually the moon takes its sunlight or light energy from the sun. It doesn't really emanate a, a, a light energy, but it has energy, of course, because it's in motion. But uh, th this particular proverb makes reference to that. And I, I wanted to tie that in uh, because, like I said, it was a, a, a subtle revelation, no, no, no earthquaking kind of insight, but certainly one significant uh, in, in the process of making knowledge make sense and applicable to understanding self. <clears throat> uh, I've already pointed out in other lectures that this is the only book black folks have in, the, in the, the population count. We don't have the Quran. A, a small few do. The majority of black folks, anywhere in America you go, nine of the people out of ten in that city black will have this book. They may not have the dictionary, <laughs> but they'll have a Bible. You know? It may be dusty, but they'll have it. <laughs> okay, we're looking at the last six signs of the 12 signs of zodiac in relationship to the 12 sons of Jacob as a symbolical representation by name. Okay, it's not by person, it's by name. Another area that theology does not enter into. And it's important if you're going to study scripture that you have this dictionary. There are only a couple available. There are more esoteric dictionaries, but the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary is available, easy to find, that gives an esoteric, a hidden meaning of the biblical names of people, places, and things in the scripture. When that name is taken out of the scripture, it does not necessarily apply. It applies only to the biblical system, the Kabbalistic system used to construct Biblos, yeah. Holios Biblos, the holy book, the holy body, is what holy Bible means, which means body of light. Yeah. Holios means fire, energy, light. Biblos means book. Book means body. We stopped uh, just before Gad with the uh, um, 12 sons, and the chapter is Genesis chapter 49, that all of these sons' names are given here. But the foundation of Jacobite astrology, in terms of the 12 names of the, the 12 signs, uh, began actually in an earlier part of Genesis in showing how Jacob produces these 12 sons with four mothers. And of course, the mother's sign is what? Anybody know? What's, what's the planet that governs the mother? No, it can't be Earth. Cancer. Cancer is, is governed by what planet? The moon. And how many phases of the moon are there? There are four. Okay. How many sons? Twelve sons. Four women. Four phases of the moon. Jacob is the son and father. He's the son of Isaac, but he's the father of the twelve. So, uh, uh, in retranslation, Jacob would be Ra. And Ra in Kemetic uh, knowledge is the sun. Okay. We've looked at Reuben, Simon, and Levi, Judah, Zebulon, Issachar, and now we're looking at Dan. First thing I want to do is, uh, uh, not Dan, I mean, uh, we looked at Dan. 
we're looking at Gad. I did my need a mistake once before. Looking at Gad, which is uh, Genesis chapter 49, verse 19. Now here's the first esoterica of Gad, if you take note of this. The, Kabbal the Kabbalists just simply supplemented this vowel for that vowel to get generator, operator, destroyer. I'm abbreviating these. The brain, generator, O, operator, the soul, D, destroyer, the sacral vertebrae, where the cosmic energy and the cosmic fire comes up and the coil lines of spirit, kudalini, comes up out of the sacral vertebrae. That's what makes you God. When those three are illuminated and activated, then you have the nature of God. Okay? Functioning. We all have it dormant. The idea in spiritual work is to become a active God, functioning God. Uh, Gad is also the head, which is revealed in uh, the brief verses in this chapter and also in uh, Deuteronomy 33. Gad, a troop, shall overcome him, but he shall overcome at the last. So, so there isn't very much toll in that particular verse. Okay. The troop, of course, are ideas, thoughts. So we turn to Deuteronomy 33 to get the rest of the take on Gad. Verse 20, Deuteronomy 33, verse 20. Write that down. And of Gad, he said, Blessed is he that enlargeth Gad. He dwelleth as a lion and tareth the arm with the crown of the head. Okay. What operates the hands, the arms, is the brain. Okay. It's very... very smooth way of making reference not only to the head but to the direct reference to Aries and its spirituality is the crown of the head. That's where the crown chakra is. The, the, the part of the brain that functions from the superconscious level of mind. So it's, it's an excellent uh, reference. It, it's really excellent poetry, what is called wisdom poetry when you get into this level of, of knowledge. It, it's quite beautifully rendered. And he provided the first part for himself because there is a portion of the lawgiver was he sealed and he came with the heads of the people. He executed the justice of the Lord and his judgments with Israel. Now, who is the Lord? The Lord is who? That's Lord, is law, the universal law is Lord. He who embodies the law is the Lord. Okay. He executed the justice of the Lord, which would then be law. He came with the heads of the people, the, the head, the divine head the Godhead. That, that's why there's only the head of presidents on the coin. Okay, that's headquarters. Okay. Okay. And there are four of them, right? Four quarters equals what? No, it doesn't. Four quarters equals what? It's right on the tip of the same mind which you said a dollar. But it's not a dollar, it equals. So one. 
God and I are one, says Jesus. Okay, here is the four quarters right there. See them? They're the same size as a quarter. Okay. Okay. Uh, and of Dan, he said, Dan is a lion's wealth. He shall leap from Bashan. A lion's wealth is the child of. Okay. Though Gad is the, the Godhead, he is still the son of someone. Okay, the son of, in this science, would be the son of the Zodiac. Okay. Now, as I mentioned, or should have mentioned, I mentioned outside we were talking, what we're do doing is we're not talking about astrology. We're talking about Zodiac science, Zodiac knowledge in terms of symbolic interpretation. See, the, the, the 12 signs were translated into 12 names, and what you do is retranslate them from 12 names back to 12 signs, okay? So how you get an understanding of how they're functioning in this book. Okay, now let me read the meaning of the name Gad. Gad, Hebrew, fortune, fortunate, Good fortune, abundance, dispenser of fortune, lot, seer, organized division, assembly, troop, the god Jupiter. That's all what Gad means. The metaphysical meaning of Gad is the faculty of power Let the horseman Gad be blessed, it says. Horse always means power in the scriptures. But still mostly on the personal plane and not lifted to truly spiritual expression. The faculty of power. Okay. Now in, in the 12 glands or the 12 powers of man, the, 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 the faculty of power is in the throat, okay? But here is the physical man, the organism of man. Each sign represents a part of the physiological body, okay? The real power machine of the physical body is the brain, okay? So the, the, this reference here of horse as power would be in reference to the brain itself, which of course is the complete brain is the cerebral nervous system, which extends from the crown of the head all the way, all the way to the very soles of your feet. That's the mind of man. The brain is in the cranium, but the mind is throughout the human body. Okay. So in putting these astrological symbol parts together, one comes up with the, the, the particular meaning of Gad in, in reference to uh, the sign of Aries. Uh, the, the key and functioning word again being head. Of course here it, it gives directly uh, the, the Hebrew concept God means Jupiter or the God of the Gad rather means the God Jupiter. Okay, but, but that's in a Kabbalistic Jewish system, okay, not in other systems, as it's an input uh, in their particular system. Okay, I got any more little notes here? I wanted to. Okay, that, that's the seventh sign, Gad. The eighth sign is Asher. Uh, Asher is Taurus. And we go immediately to the names, not name, that makes reference to this concept, Asher. The reason I am obliged to say that because here is a rendering of 
the name or concept Asher. In Revelations, it's spelled this way. Okay, but, but that Asher and that Asher are not the same. Uh, the 12 tribes of Israel are not the 12 sons of Jacob. That, that's another concept that's dealing with astronomy. So I, I don't want to get... Uh, disrupted by that at this point because we're going to do a, a piece on the 12 constellations. Okay, the first Asher, the one we made reference to in uh, let's see, Genesis chapter 49. I want to give you the verses so you can look this up. Of course, if you read the one page, because there's only one page, it, uh, it covers the whole concept of chapter. Verse 24 uh, is where Asher begin. And of Asher he said, let Asher be blessed with children, let him be acceptable to his brethren, and let him dip his foot in oil. This is Deuteronomy. Let's turn back to Genesis. It's Deuteronomy 33 verse 24. Verse 20. Gen Genesis 49 verse 20. Out of Asher his bread shall be fat, and he shall yield royal dainties. <laughs> a very brief concept with uh, two significant words that don't seem to go together. Royal dainties. You know, doesn't quite good, except in, in terms of breaking uh, the symbol uh, uh, of the hidden idea of Taurus. Let me, now let me read you the meaning of Asher and Asher so that you, you can see what I'm talking about in your own consciousness rather than have me explain it all. Asher, straight, straightforward, prosperous, happiness, blessedness. Now look at this. Here's, a, here's another spelling of Asher. All those of the same name, okay? Variating in spelling. And then, of course, May as well put this one up there while I'm doing it. All the same name. Now we're going to read them. Asherah. A-S-H-E-R-A. -E Straight, upright, a pillar, fortunate happiness. The same concept we just read. Asher is thought to be the same as Ashtoreth in many places in the Bible. Asherah seems to relate directly to the groves where Asheroth was worshipped and to the image themselves. Asherah, Asheroth are usually mentioned in connection with Baal. Okay, and now here's what most Christians don't know. This is Baal's name. I forget, I think it's Jose where Jehovah says, my name is no longer Baal, it is now Jehovah. Okay, if I'm not mistaken, it's in uh, 
not in the book of Hosea, but look at this. That's Baal, Baal. Those are the two Moorish titles. Baal is not what Christian theology presents it as. Let me see. We're talking about the names now. Understand the difference. We're not talking persona. We're talking names, meaning of, for the understanding of the central theme that is in relationship to the circle of the twelve. We're breaking this information down, okay? So you don't get caught up in the the uh, other stuff. <laughs> okay, Asher. Blackness, black, aurora, the dawn, morning. Break forth, become free, a free man, successful. Okay, that, that's Asher. And where's the other one here? I missed one. Here it is here. Asherah, Asheroth. Pillars, columns, groves, groves, a shrine of the goddess Asherah is the meaning of the name Asheroth. The temples and groves of Asheroth were the sacred shrines where worship of the Phoenician Venus was practiced in licentious ways. What's the uh, planet that governs Taurus. Anybody know? Just mention it. No, Venus. Venus. Venus governs both Libra and Taurus. It is a feminine energy, feminine planet. See? That's why you have royal dainty Dainty making reference to the feminine aspect, royal that to the divine aspect. The, the, the concept royal is not only applied to that of king and queen, but also to that of gods and goddesses. Okay, and that, and that's the reason it's a little bitty uh, one-liner information describes uh, Asher in, in this uh, presentation of the 12 sons of Jacob. Otherwise, it, it won't make any sense. Uh, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. The, the other phenomena, because a, 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 a bunch of preachers have read that particular chapter, and all they can do is shake their head. It's a mystery unto me, and only unto God. Does it. <laughs> you, you know, I, I don't like to mock the brothers too, too much, but I, I know what, what doors are closed to them because they don't have the keys to unlock it. You know, not only that, they're virtually afraid of the keys that would unlock it. You know, m most fundamental ministers, not, they don't step away from astrology, they jump away, <laughs> you know. And they don't get uh, any kind of symbological training in their Bible uh, classes, their Bible school. They, they don't deal with symbology, you know, except the, the, the basic little ones that are in the... Bible dictionaries and the Bible encyclopedias, you know, very little ones. You know. Then they can't, usually can't apply them. Okay, I think we covered all of the names in reference to Asher or Asher. That should be what, four, and then one, two, three, four, actually five. Okay. So this is Taurus, uh, uh, that is Asher. Taurus is also second house. That's a house of money. And as I read two or three of these, you, you saw or heard that concept being given. Let me reread it again. Asher. Straight, straightforwardness, prosperous, happiness, blessedness. Asherah. Straight, upright, a pillar, fortunate, happiness. I think it's one more that also renders uh, this whole... One of the astonishing things about this particular name, Asherah, is that it states it has blackness, black, aurora, the dawn, and also 
become free. Yeah. A very, very interesting rendering of that particular name, a free man. And also, in reference to money, uh, it renders it successful, is the meaning of Asher. Okay. Okay. Naphtali is the next sign. Uh, in Genesis chapter 49, verse 21. Now this is one I had to wrestle with a, a bit uh, because it, it virtually gives almost little or no idea of the meaning of this particular verse. Naphtali is a hind let loose. He giveth goodly words. Okay, I mean, you know, really obscure, you know. So you got to hunt around to find some assistance in appreciating that little dab of a hint. So back to Genesis, I mean uh, Deuteronomy 33. And of Naphtali he said, O Naphtali, satisfied with favor and full with the blessing of the Lord, Possessest thou the west, listen carefully to this now, possessing thou the west and the north and the south. Okay, we need to stop there. Okay. Naphtali? Yes, sir. Naphtali. Possessing thou the west and the south. This is the east. This is the west. This is the south. Okay. Constellationally, this would be this constellational area here. Okay. We know it's not Sagittarius. We know it's not Libra, because we know who Libra is. So the only one it could be would be Scorpio. Okay. All right. Now let's see if we get further verification of that of Naphtali. Well, that's the east and the south, which we re really usually don't look at the the west, or rather the, the west and the south. Yes, you do. We look at southwest. And let me jump back here to Deuteronomy 33, verse 23. Yeah, okay, that, that's, that's all that's given for Naphtali. Uh, that, that's comprehensible, as I mentioned. The, the other verse is virtually almost incomprehensible in reference to uh, Scorpio, so it doesn't... Let me see here. Hold on just a second. I got another... There should be another piece here that helps me out. That's it. <laughs> That's all the clue, the clue that particular one gives. 
Uh, the, the biggest part of it, of course, is the directional concept uh, on the chart itself, in terms of west and south. And we'll, we'll get to who the other two is, which by process of elimination, it only leaves Scorpio as being uh, Naphtali. Uh, if some, I, I got another uh, verse to put that in, but I have to find it here. It's not kicking back into my head right away. The next one is Joseph. Jo Joseph is a fruitful bog, even a fruitful bog by a well, whose branches run over the wall. The archers have sorely grieved him and shot at him and hated him. But his bow abode in strength, and the arms of his hands were made strong by the hands of the mighty God of Jacob. From thence is the shepherd, the stone of Israel. Okay, anybody guess who that might be? He's given the, the first two major clues. Right, bow and arrow. Yeah, okay, P pretty clear. Uh, in that, which again astonishes me why they were so symbologically uh, magnifying certain signs and so obscure about others. You know, it's really very interesting. One of the other problems is that these 12 suns are a part of the 12 constellations, but they change in position when you move towards the zodiac for constellational observation. Okay. Uh, then some of the names, two of the names are left out, and two other names are added. But I, like I said, I don't want to get, get into dealing with that right now. Even by the God of thy father who's, who shall help thee, and by the Almighty who shall bless thee, and with blessings of heaven above, blessings of the deep, that lieth under blessings of the breasts and of the womb. The blessings of thy father have prevailed above the blessings of thy progenitors unto the utmost bound of the everlasting hills. They shall be on the head of Joseph and on the crown of the head of him that was separated from his brethren. Okay, I mean, it's quite a few laurels thrown at the feet of the 30 degrees of Sagittarius. You know? But Sag Sagittarius is governed by Jupiter, which is the greater beneficiary of this solar system. The energy of what is called good fortune, great fortune, great blessings, is the energy of the planet Jupiter. The key here is to understand that all 12 signs are in reference to all 12 parts of each one of us. The 30 degrees that we're born under, we're given the greater influence of that particular planet under those 30 degrees at the time of our birth so that we have more of those 30 degrees than of the other 11 signs. You know. But we're certainly being affected solaristically by all of the, the planets as they deposit their energy into I, our ionis stratus hemisphere. Okay, we're not receiving direct waves from some billions of miles from one planet to the earth. That isn't how it's happening. In this turning, in this motion, these planets are throwing energy towards our solar system. See, and, and it takes some time for it to travel here. It isn't dust energy. It is electromagnetic light energy. And so it's traveling at the speed of light. But that isn't tomorrow. Just like when you look up and see the sun, that's not the sun. That's a sun spot. The sun has moved on. Okay, that's how fast this solar system is moving, and how fast we are moving in our orbital flight around the sun. But it continues to deposit this life-giving, intelligent energy. What we learn when we become intelligent is that the universe has always been intelligent. We're just discovering it. <laughs> you okay? So we don't have to put order in the universe. We simply have to comprehend 
the order that already has always been here. How it affects us on an energy, intelligent level is a part of the study of astrology and, and the practice application part of that science. Benjamin is the next sign, verse... Uh, okay, well, first let me read the name Joseph so that you at least have that presented also. is another phenomenon. It's almost two pages of... Of course, it, it's a big key in the whole astrological story of the Twelve Sons, I guess is why the emphasis is there. And Joseph plays a big part in rendering the knowledge of uh, the, the concept of Twelve. He, he's the one who had the, the many coats of color. Okay, Twelve colors, which is again representation of not just 12 signs but 12 powers as well in, in terms of color being an emanation from an electromagnetic center. Joseph whom God will add to, God shall increase, he shall increase progressively from perfection unto perfection. The meaning of Joseph I'm not going to read all this stuff here. Metaphysical meaning of Joseph. The state of consciousness in which we increase in character along with lines. We not only grow into a broader understanding, but there is an increase of vitality and substance. Joseph is especially representative of the realm of forms. He was clothed with a coat of many colors. He was a dreamer, an interpreter of dreams, which is part of the uh, psychic ability of Sagittarius. They are not only dreamers, but they are also given the propensity towards prophecy, prophetic insight. I, I prefer the word visionary. This faculty has the power to throw onto the screen of visibility in substance and life forms every idea that the mind may conceive. While the imagination is a very necessary faculty and is powerful and productive, yet it is belittled and often derided and scorned by the other faculties of the mind while they are unawakened spiritually, while they are functioning in intellectual consciousness instead of true spiritual understanding. He's talking about why Joseph was so belittled by his, his brothers. He mentions that he had this vision, this dream of seeing uh, his brothers and his father bowing to him. You know, and of course that would provoke uh, jealousy among any group of brothers. But it, it's the faculty of imagination that is in the, the metaphorical sense belittled by the rest of the brain because that's the last faculty that the immature mind trusts. You know, because it's so constantly active. But, but it's the key to creativity. It is the key to prosperity. It is the key to healing. It is the key to magic. It is the key to miracle working. It's imagination. Under the dynamic influence of the soul's power, not the brain's power, okay? Like the brain, when you hear the word psychic abilities, that's talking about your brain. When you hear the word soul ability, that's talking about your inner self. And those powers are over and above the brain's abilities, okay? The, the, the uh, extra sensory uh, perception concept, ESP, all brain abilities. That's essentially what the Masons gain access to in their earlier entrance into their 
32 degrees, they get psychic abilities of, of varied kinds, including the sisters in the Eastern Star. Joseph is also the one that uh, becomes the Moor in the scriptures, yeah, because he becomes, quote, Egyptian. Yeah. And it's given the, the position of, uh, let's see, Genesis chapter, I think it's Genesis 42. Let me double check here. Yes, okay. Now here is one of the evidences of the meaning of more in the scriptures, one of them. Verse 30, write these down. Genesis 42, verses 30 and 33. Now this is after uh, Joseph's brothers have sold him into slavery and are going back empty-handed after having met Joseph, okay, years later, and they didn't even recognize him, okay. Now here's the, 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 the logics of deduction. If the Jews were white, then the sons of Jacob would be white. If they went back to Egypt and Joseph was sitting on the throne among a 99.9% .9 black population and they saw Joseph and they couldn't recognize him, what color would Joseph be? You, you know, in, in deduction, okay? But that is what the verse is for. It's to identify the on-taking uh, idea of the so-called Jew, which is not Jew, but Jewel, Hebrew, which is not Hebrew, but her web, uh, uh, being presented as Lord of the earth. Here's the verse. He's, uh, uh, one of the sons is talking to Jacob after they've returned without the grain that they went to get, okay? The second time, uh, just before the famine and famine began uh, in Israel, in, in Canaan rather. The man who is the Lord of the land spake roughly to us and took us for spies of the country. Okay, then go back down to verse 33. And the man, the Lord of the country, said unto us, Hereby shall I know that ye are true men. There's your concept there. Lord of the land, Lord of the earth, Lord of the country, Lord of the, the earth again. He was governor. Joseph had become governor, which is one of the definitions that Wallace Budge gives for this hieroglyphic. Let me do it right here. This is how he renders this particular glyph and gives only the consonants for more. Okay? But among those concepts, this is the, the definition, one of the definitions he gives for more along with captain, governor, okay? and uh, landlord is another concept. Landlord, lord of the land is given for. Um, more, which is the meaning of more, Lord of the earth. But in that concept, when one is not talking directly about the physical earth first, but he's talking about the body earth. Okay? Your earth is your physical body. The same elements that are in the physical earth are in your physical body. If you master your physical body, you master the elements of the earth. That's the principle in spiritual development and uh, the, the work of self-mastery. 
Okay, I hope I didn't deviate too far from where we were here in terms of rendering Joseph. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, the next one is Benjamin. Benjamin shall raven as a wolf, or rage. In the morning he shall devour the prey. At night he shall divide the spoils. So we have to turn to Deuteronomy 33 again to look at Benjamin. Verse 12, And of Benjamin he said, The beloved of the Lord shall dwell in safety by him, and the Lord shall cover him all the, way, all the day long. Listen carefully to this. And he shall dwell between his shoulders. I'll read it again. And of Benjamin he said, The beloved of the Lord shall dwell in safety by him, and the Lord shall cover him all the day long, and he shall dwell between his shoulders. Okay. The first thing, this is the first key here. The Lord shall dwell in safety by him, and the Lord shall cover him all the day long. Okay. What covers your body? It's so common that we don't even think about it as being a covering. It's our skin, right? Now, what dwells between your shoulders? No, it did not, no. You just went above your shoulders when you went up there. No. The skeletal system dwells between your shoulders. The bone structure is what Capricorn governs, and the skin. Okay, those are all under the influence of Capricorn. Very, very cleverly done. Very cleverly done. Okay, let's look at the name Benjamin. Son of the right hand is Benjamin. Ben means son, Jamin, hand, or right hand. Son of good fortune, son of prosperity, son of happiness, son of the south, productiveness. Metaphysical meaning, faith and active, accomplishing faith in the consciousness of man. And then they, they give a rendering here of some activities in Chronicles. I don't want to deal with that. Benjamin is established in consciousness, expressed as strong, courageous, and conquering thoughts. Mighty men of valor is a reference of Benjamin. It doesn't help the, the concept of uh, Capricorn that much, uh, except in terms of courage and strength is one of the, uh, some of the attributes of Capricorn. But it doesn't lend that much to it. The, the, the big key here is son of the right hand, the one in charge and with authority. Capricorn is in charge of uh, one of the three, it's in charge of the wealth of the world. Okay, the material wealth of the world is given under the guise of, of the 30 degrees of Capricorn. Uh, I'm, I, I don't want to do a rendering of each sign yet. I'm going to do that, uh, an astrological rendering of each each sign in, in groups of fours, I, I think is what I'll deal with. So I'll only do three classes on them. Uh, 
the, the, what I, my intent is to give the group the, the astrological representation of the sun and then send them to the uh, astrology book to read their own sign. It's kind of an introduction to each sign or, and one should always read the opposite of their 30 degrees. Well, Sagittarius has Gemini, and what's yours? Cancer. Cancer is Capricorn. Okay, okay. because you find you meet your opposite, often marry your opposite. You know. Well, I'm dating Capricorn. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, there's energy harmony there. You know, uh, uh, if if there isn't other aspects that that carries uh, the Capricorn beyond their correlation with uh, emotional energy. Uh, earth energy it, in its logics finds itself able to absorb the warm energy of the Cancerian. Uh, the problem of Capricorn is they keep so much inwardly you can't tell by their external expression how you're impacting them. You know, They're very inner persons that feel inside and think inside, you know. So you have to look for results from Capricorn if you're trying to read them, not not their expression. It doesn't it doesn't tell what what they're thinking. They're stable uh, and definitely strong in character, particularly if they have acquired confidence and and most proficient and successful if they found either their talents or their skills. You know, they're the exemplary factor of human beings actually being born to succeed. You know, human nature is designed to succeed on this planet. It's what we do to our, the psychology of the mind that disenfranchises each individual from their own powers and abilities. The illusions have as much of an effect upon our human psychology as truth does. If we buy the illusion first, we'll believe it as readily as if it were the truth. And we begin functioning from that uh, particular viewpoint. And for black folks, it's been the illusion of inferiority. We've learned how to fail and translate that to our children so that they don't expect to succeed, except those extraordinary individuals who grab a hold of their talent and, and illuminate their imagination. If you can get it, if you can see it, you, you can do it. You know, the, the key about imagination, children need to learn that early. Much of learning is not so much of memorizing as it is seeing. If they can see how it works, you know, see what it means, see what it does, then they can bring it back with the picture, the right side of the brain, the picture side of the brain. Uh, imagination. Uh, Genesis chapter 10, 11 rather, is the first metaphysical key given in the Bible in terms of applied metaphysics. And the whole earth was one language and of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they, they had brick for stone and slime had they for mortar. And they said, go to, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men build. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, 
and they have all one language. And this they began to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Yeah. That's the complete science of mind right there. Nothing that they imagine. See, okay? The key is in imagination. The, the basic principle is whatever the mind conceives, the mind will achieve. Uh, Napoleon Hill used the word, whatever the mind conceives, the mind can achieve. And, and the key is will. Whatever the mind conceives, conception is birth. So, so if you see it in your mind, if it's active in your mind, it's already born. It's on the way of manifesting on the physical plane. See, unless you negate it you know, with doubt, with fear, with disbelief. That, that erases whatever psychological assumptions that you make. That's the other law of mind in action. The psychological assumption automatically provides the means to fulfill the dream desire. The psychological assumption automatically provides the means to fulfill the dream desire, whatever that desire, that dream, that vision is. By making a correct assumption automatically provides the mental, spiritual, and physical means to bring that dream desire to fruition. That's how the mind works. That's how God's mind works. That's how our mind works. That's how mind works. Not for good, for evil. That's how it works. Whatever you psychologically assume, you automatically provide the means to fulfill that dream desire, that desire, dream, nightmare, day dream, night dream. It doesn't matter which one it is. That's why it's important to know what you are thinking and to correct your thinking if it is something you do not want. You see, rather than to say, if, 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 if a nigga rob me, if, if they uh, carjack me, if they, you're making an assumption, you know, and you create it, then you forget it, then it happens. I knew that was going to happen, I knew it, I told you. And here's a, I, I like, love to tell a story. I was in Howard Johnson in Cleveland, Ohio, having coffee. Sunday afternoon, around 2, 2.30 after church, and I, I just got through talking with someone about some part of this metaphysical thinking. Five minutes after I'm sitting in it, in runs this overweight white woman, runs into the dining room, place full of black folks, because you know, it's one of them, after uh, church, you could go to get the dinner, you know. I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. Nigga snatched my purse, I knew he was gonna do it. <laughs> That's what she said right there in the diamond. But the key was what she said, that she knew it. She knew it because she had kept assuming in her own mind that it was going to happen. And surely enough, somebody grabbed a damn person and ran, <laughs> you know. You know it, it's interesting. We need to understand that because this reinforces the intent of divine nature to move us towards self-mastery, so that we're not victims of our own mind, you see. Everyone has power. The problem is it gets depleted between affirmation and negation, between faith in oneself and no confidence in oneself, a love of oneself and a hatred of oneself. That, that, that's divided energy, you see, that, that keeps yanking one forward and back, up and down, 
You know, as long as you, you're in turmoil to the law of duality, you can't find balance. And it's only in balance where you create, you see. Uh, so so the, the, the acquiring of self-knowledge allows you to function consciously, methodically, to get done that which you're capable of achieving. Without it, you, you, you're no more than a pawn on your own chessboard. You see, that means somebody else is the king. <laughs> if you're the pawn, you see, someone else is moving your life in your own script. And that, that, that does not make for master, able, and noble, M-A-N. And you got to do M-A-N before you can do G-O-D. <laughs> okay. okay. In, in the scripture we're reading, we yes. refer to the east. What does that refer to? In, I'm glad you asked that. Very good. Inside is east. The other part is the front of the body is east. The top of the head is the, the north. The bottom of the feet is the south. The back of the body is the west. Okay. Very good. I'm glad you asked that. Okay, we, we, we dealt with Benjamin, son of the right hand, which is a big Masonic uh, symbolism, because uh, Capricorn represents and Benjamin represents the Master Mason in Masonic uh, symbology. Yeah, go ahead. I was going to ask you a quick question. When, yeah. we, when we are projecting those negative thoughts, mm -hmm. we immediately should do it. Yeah, well, right, yeah. Not, not, not when you get a bunch of them. When you get one, that's when you can handle it. You know, if it, particularly if it's something that's negating something that you want. I can't, I ain't going to be able to, I can't afford, I don't know how to. You know, now, wait a minute. That's wrong. I do know how. I can afford it. Because you're dealing on the mental plane with mental jewelry, with mental stones of prosperity, where you're rich. You don't have to go in your pocket for that wealth. It's already on your mental plane. You have to affirm it on the mental plane. And then it manifests somehow on the physical plane. It fits into the meaning and order of your world. How, how you're moving in your life cycle is how you find your keys of prosperity. Okay. It, it may not make any sense to somebody else because it's not designed for somebody else, it's designed for you. I'd like to tell a story about the brother in Cleveland who prayed for a certain amount of money to buy a church. And one morning the Spirit told him to get up, put on his clothes and go downtown. You know, he would find his wealth. So he put on his clothes and went downtown and you know, the Spirit told him to go up uh, 9th Street and go up in that alley. So he walked up in the alley and went up in the back there and he stood there and the Spirit said, now, jump up and down three times and say hallelujah three times. So he jumped up and down, hallelujah, hallelujah, you know, and he stood there, you know, and the Spirit didn't say nothing else, you know, and he stood there waiting. And after about two or three minutes, he dropped his arm. Devil and trick me. And he started walking out the alley and kicked a brown paper bag and the money slid out. <laughs> and when he counted it, it was the exact amount of money he had prayed for to buy his church. You know, pure faith, pure confidence, and acting on it. You know, not, not, not practical. You know, it didn't make any sense to anybody else. Robert told me to. I said, shit, I ain't getting up out of this bed. <laughs> You know, but that's how it happens, you know. So it's important. The, the best thing I've gotten off of television in the last 30 years is one concept. Pay attention to yourself. <laughs> Listen to your inner voice. Pay attention to your visions, your dreams, your thoughts. 
pay attention. See? We always get guidance. We don't always listen. We don't always do. But we always get guided. You see? We make the mistakes. God doesn't. You see? Affirm the drive towards perfect guidance. It is the best gift a human being can have. To be divinely guided every day means you're not going to make any more mistakes. <laughs> if, if, if you want to know what it really means, you see. To be divinely guided and listen is, shows and demonstrates to you first that you know how to succeed and that you are succeeding. When you demonstrate that on a consistent level, your brain gets the idea of how to succeed and then that it should succeed, that it's supposed to succeed. When the brain realizes it's perfect, that's when you are functioning active God. And that's the difference between being perfect and not perfect. The brain doesn't know it's perfect. We keep telling it it ain't. You know, we keep mentioning and affirming the, the, the poverty, the lack, the deficiency, instead of the fullness, the abundance, the greatness, and the power. You see? It's how we are conditioning ourselves, mainly because we get, we're getting a lot of help from white boy America here, you know. Still thinks blonde straw hair is the best hair in the world, which is stupid. But that's his damn problem. D don't make it yours. You know, and I'm not talking so about hair. I'm talking about th this image of falling into the second class psyche. You see, our athletes have demonstrated how to get out of that psyche by, by expression of their super talent. You know, the thing is to transfer the desire, not the act. We, we don't need 60% of our youth becoming NBA stars, you know. There are other talents and abilities, skills, and, you know. I mean, you know that, that's the other level we have to learn to think on. We're not doing it. We're not learning to think on different levels. Talent is raw. It's where you direct it, where you connect to. You, know, you, you can get a passion for stamps. She didn't find one stamp worth a million dollars. <laughs> what was it, the cowboy, the black uh, cowboy's name? B uh, Buffalo somebody? Bill somebody? No, not Buffalo Bill. He's a black, huh? Right. They printed one, or not one, one sheet of his image on a stamp upside down. Each one of those stamps worth a million dollars. You know, each one of them. You know, you know. I mean, you know, I mean we're in miracle land. You just got to be looking for your miracle. Yeah, we in miracle. Yeah, this is the greatest money-making country in the world. You know, if you wonder why we got so many damn devils here, <laughs> the devil know where the money is too. See, he's trying to get his, yours, and somebody else's. Okay, we're going to stop there and do uh, about a 15-minute meditation and, and technique. Uh, hook that tape up for me. Uh, because I'm, I'm going to ring the Tibetan bell. If you've seen any of my tapes, then you know something about meditation. And uh, the, the, the primary purpose of meditation is the process of becoming God. And that's the simplest way to put it.
That's what meditation is for. There are a long list of benefits by sitting in the silence. The body gains access to its healing properties from the, the crown center and from the medulla oblongata when it opens to let higher energies flow into the body that heal the body. The body gets a chance to correct itself in subtle, small areas that we don't even think about in terms of healing and healing process. You give the nervous system opportunity to rest, conscious rest, instead of subconscious rest, where uh, for most of us it is about three hours of still sleep and about five hours of tossing and turning because we're trying to work out anxiety in our sleep, you know, because we don't know how to move it out of the way before we go to, to rest. You know, the more doesn't sleep, he rests. And, and it means the ability to let your astral brain nervous system rest so that your physical brain and physical nervous system can rest. If, if you're anxious, frustrated, angry on the astral level, your body is not going to rest because you've got to work the stuff out. You know, much of the tossing and turning is, is astral impact on the physical body. You know, stored up energies in certain parts of the body will, will lead to uh, tension. You know. And black folks live in a tense state. They think that's the natural way to live. You know, always tenacious, you know. What? You, you know, you know, that kind of half ready to fight, half ready to run, you know. So that they don't acquire this uh, flowing rhythm that, that we are born with because of the, the noisy world that <laughs> jaws and shakes and rattles our nervous system. And the fact that too many of us don't have the vitamin B level to, to lend itself to a harmonic functioning nervous system. Uh, if squeaky gym shoes on the sidewalk irritates you, if scratching a magazine irritates you. That means you're lacking or depleted in vitamin B. And that's the first indicator of vitamin B deficiency. If sounds, high squeaking sounds irritate your nervous system, your nervous system is operating on empty. You, know, so you need foods would be, but the easiest way to supplement is to simply take vitamin, vitamin B complex. It's inexpensive. Niacin is the one that uh, cleans us out and opens the blood vessels, capillaries, aorta, arteries, so that the blood can flow throughout the whole blood vessel systems so it can reestablish harmonic rhythm of the blood. The greatest part of our rhythm is the circular harmonic movement of the blood from crown of head to feet and the, the harmonic expiration, inspiration of the breath. Those are the greatest movements in the physical body. If they're out of harmony, we're out of harmony. And our lives are out of harmony. Our thinking is out of harmony. Meditation allows you to reharmonize your instrument. But that's a, that's, a, that's a benefit of it. It's not the purpose. But it's certainly worth it. Uh, I used to talk about sitting up straight, and I don't talk about that anymore because the idea is to relax. You know, that's it. Tell brothers sit up straight and they go, you know, well, they are sitting up straight, but they add attention, you know. You add attention, that means you're tense. So the idea is to relax. You know, don't, don't slump because you're curving your spinal cord, and, and that certainly sends a, a defeated signal to the subconscious. But just relax. However, you sit comfortably. At home, sit in your most comfortable chair. Lean back and relax. Hands held upward so that you don't subconsciously create tension. We do and grab our hands, we, you know, squeeze. You know. Breathing in the nose, out the mouth is circular breathing. 
It's one way you re-establish breathing harmony. May as well give you all the benefit of these since I got them in my pocket here. Take one and put it on your tongue, let it melt, and pass one back to him, pass it back to him. No, reach in with your thumb. Pull one out. Put it right on your tongue, it'll melt in two seconds. Okay. 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 Opens your nose up, nasal passage, so that you can breathe. Bring your attention to your heart center, right in the middle of your chest. That's where the heart chakra is. The point of the entrance of perfect love. By your own quiet will, you open your heart chakra because you want it open. It is desire and will operative within your body consciousness. It's closed out of fear, out of anger, out of protection out of rejection. We open it by our willingness to love. You see? The natural state of a man. <laughs> Close your eyes, visualize your heart center and a small red rose in the center of your chest. Okay. See it slowly opening. Notice how beautiful it is. Remember how a rose smells. A rose smells the way love feels. Love feels the way a rose smells. Perfect love. Opening like a rose in my heart chakra. Growing bigger, more beautiful, gradually opening. As it opens, your heart chakra also opens.
God and I are one together. God and I are one again. God and I are one again. God and I are one. I feel the light, I see the light, I am the light, together. I feel the light, I see the light, I am the light, again. I feel the light, I see the light, I am the light. My heart is filled with perfect love. Together, my heart is filled with perfect love. Again, my heart is filled with perfect love. Again, my heart is filled with perfect love. I am prosperous and successful in all the good that I do together. I am prosperous and successful in all the good that I do again. I am prosperous and successful in all the good that I do again. I am prosperous and successful in all the good that I do. Again, I am prosperous and successful in all the good that I do. Love, peace, and power. And so it is together. Love, peace, and power. And so it is. Okay, Moors. Another day's work in the house of Solomon. Any questions? Anything that comes to mind? Of course, I'm supposed to ask that before meditation because meditation lets everything slide down to the subconscious. The top of the head is the north, the bottom of the feet is the south, the front of the body is the east, and inside. The back of the body is west. 